Can I hear you? You're muted. <laughs> Classic, right? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, man. Do I have taco on my face? You're so cute. No. <laughs> I wish I had taco on mine. I just got off like a, an hour and a half Zoom call with my siblings. Oh, it was great. Quite. It was lovely. It was actually lovely. I haven't talked to them in a long time, so it was kind of fun. Oh, man, that's good. What are you drinking? I'm having some wine. What are you drinking? This is mostly two-town cider, Marionberry flavor. Ooh. With some melted ice and a little tequila. Dang, girl, that's a cocktail. Well, I got the recipe from a book that I have, and I rarely use recipes for drinks, but it was Mexican night. I was having taco leftovers between hanging out with Kendra and hanging out with you, and I had a bunch of cider, so. I love it. I've never mixed cider with tequila. How is it? It's actually really good. Is it? Yes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. The recipe was four parts of tequila to like, you fill the glass with ginger ale. And since the cider is already alcoholic, I put less tequila. Right. So less tequila and two town cider and a little, a lemon wedge. No, mm. a lime wedge. Nice. Yeah. I like so, it. I was talking to Kendra about, um, the Who's criminal Kendra? justice system. Oh. <laughs> so, Who is Kendra? She's one of my friends from when I lived in Minnesota. Nice. She works in, uh, she's got a social work master's, and she works in Minneapolis, St. Paul in social work, and knows a lot about the criminal justice system. And so. I bet she does. Yeah, that required some tequila. <laughs> I bet. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think life is generally requiring a lot of tequila these days. Yeah. Yeah. Generally. Mm -hmm. So, um, how's the uh, election going? How's the. The campaign. I'll send you, I've been blogging about it on my website. Um, yeah. A lot. You'll see, like I visited all of these neighborhoods, most of our neighborhoods and dropping flyers. And I think I hit about 2000 houses. Nice. I wanted to ask you, do, is your neighborhood considered historic Fairview or old town or are you guys something separate? Separate. What are you guys considered? What's your neighborhood called? It's Bridge Street. Like Bridge it's super Street, groovy. Bridge Street, and all of its things that come off of it are just Bridge Street. I think. I like it. I, I walked. I walked the whole damn thing. It's super interesting, right? It's like I feel like I felt like I was like on a country road. Um, <laughs> It was just really, it, it, you know, and the train goes by and I don't know. I thought I, I learned, Holly, I've learned, I'm so glad I did this. I learned so much about Fairview. Yeah. And there's, yeah, it's like, what's that like old Pogo line? Like you can learn a lot just from looking or listening and it, and it really is. I mean, you know, it's not like I could knock on doors. So I was just dropping off stuff. Yeah. And occasionally bumping into people, and I had some really great conversations. But there's an enormous uh, disparity. Like, like what is is called what what the living conditions are for the middle class in our like suburban city are quite is quite large, right? Yeah. And um, I was in apartment complexes and swanky subdivisions and I was on in Fairview Village and I was in Old Town and I was on the lakes and I was it, all over the place and it's just it's incredibly it's an incredibly diverse place um, in terms of how people live um, and who folks are it's really purple there's lots of blue there's lots of red all over the place 
um, I just, I've learned, I learned a lot. Um, and I'm really glad that I did it. Nice. That's really yeah. exciting. Yeah, it, it, it was. I mean, again, it's weird, right? Like it's not running unopposed in a pandemic is an interesting experience, right? Like, it's not like, you know, there's some, there's all these great debates or there's all this political back and forth or there's all these house parties. There's, there's none of that. I mean, oh. it's like the zombie apocalypse out there. You're just going around dropping stuff off, right? It's weird. Yeah. It is weird. Well, I didn't know that you were running unopposed until I got my giant voters pamphlet. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And thank goodness, too. <laughs> I know, although, you know, right, it's a double-edged sword. I, I, I really, I honestly, truly wish I had opposition because I think that people should have a choice, right? Yeah. Like, you're just going to get pistachio whether they like it or not, right? And unfortunately, <laughs> that's the case with so many races, right? Like, Keith is running unopposed. Steve yeah. Owen is running unopposed, right? I mean, there's only one race and even like you know mike weatherby is sick and isn't even really campaigning so it's like i don't know wow i wow. know yeah well i don't know anybody else who would say that they wish they were not running unopposed yeah <laughs> i really do wish that somebody would like i just feel like we all deserve a choice and you know some some debate and some discussion and a, an exchange of ideas and a real choice when you get your ballot. Like, mm. I mean, anyway, um, but it, it's been an, it's been a really good experience just for what I've learned about where I live. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it is such a, it's so much bigger than I thought. It's so much better than I thought. It's a, like I said, it's a lot more diverse than I thought in like all of the ways that that means. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of people worried about crime. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And yet you cannot find any crime statistics at all. Wow. Like we don't publish them. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office doesn't publish them. So you, when you Google things, it's all .com. Like if you do crime statistics in Fairview, or crime rates in Fairview, or all these other different Google searches. It's all these dot com sites that come up that publish information, and some of it is like really scary. Like we're safe, we're 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 like more crime ridden than ninety five percent of communities in the state, which is just wrong. But that's what comes up on a Google search. It's really interesting. Wow. So I'm actually going to meet our sheriff on Thursday, and I'm going to ask him. <laughs> can we get can we get a crime report yeah and publish it and send it to people well doesn't anyway. he make a he, he, doesn't he visit like the um city council meetings once a month yeah but what we don't what i haven't seen on our website or his website or anything is is like evidence right so what we what we're left with is anecdotes mm right about the drug house in the village or my neighbor got broken into and you know that's really useful information like i love me some qualitative data but like we don't have any quantitative data and um i don't know if it's getting worse i don't know for how long it might be getting worse what might be getting worse where where what might it might be caused by violent crime property crime i don't really know but it's definitely on people's minds. And that wasn't part of my platform. Wow. But people really do care about it. And like, yeah. they really care about roads and safe walking and sidewalks. Yeah, I have a feeling like the next several years of my life are gonna basically be infrastructure week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have been talking about it a little bit at the planning commission. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, and, and, and it's really interesting, Holly, like I got like super all, it's interestingly the neighborhood that like I now have the most like love for is, um, is Old Town. And there is, there was a plan in 1997 called the Renaissance plan that was supposed to like swank out Old Town and we never delivered on it. 
Oh, man. It's like a Bruce Springsteen song, man. It's like the forsaken old working class part of our city has been like forgotten. And like they were supposed to get a Christmas tree. They were supposed to get entry signs. They were supposed to get sidewalks and crosswalks and all this stuff. And they, and Sarah sent me a list of things that they did um, on with block grant dollars. And it looks like for years they would check off little bits, but it was like, stormwater improvements like that's real sexy and they did use some of that community development block grant money to do things to like fix up the old city hall and make it the community center mm -hmm. but i would say like two-thirds of that plan was never realized right yeah i've been to the community center and it's uh there's not much to it yeah i've been thinking a lot about um what we might be able to do with that, right? Mm -hmm. We could have our, our, our tool library. Yeah. We could yeah. have a really groovy after school program there. Groovy. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, why don't we activate that space? It's just sitting there empty, right? Like, I'm not sure if Play East uses it or how the city uses it, but it looks like it's mostly empty. I think that they used it for, um, to keep some census stuff and some census materials, but. Yeah, a few years ago, they did um, some like community outreach at the community center where they had um, some like posters. They, they sent out a survey, they wanted people to come and say, what we prioritize right. that thing like the fairview 20 30, 2030 thing yeah 30, whatever yeah and um of course i was late because you know it was a few years ago and small children make their parents late to everything so <laughs> we went we had some hot chocolate or cider or whatever it was that they had and we put our little stickers on the boards and answered a question that I was completely unprepared to answer and yeah it was fun mm -hmm. but I haven't had any other reason to go there before or since so yeah and I think that just feels like a a, a wasted opportunity right like mm -hmm. you know if we're we really ought to do something and you know we might be able to get some grant funding to put something in there and I think the question is just what could we potentially right yeah don't they like teach classes out of there or something they must somebody has to dude i don't think so i mean i think i'll email hiro and t ask him like how if if he uses that for some play east activities but we really i mean again it's it's not very far from fairview elementary like we could have a a sun school after school program where we could bring all the kids over and do something really cool right, right. like I mean, if we have a space, it's just we don't have we don't have staff or money to activate it, and we should find it. Yeah, right? if if it's out there, we should find it. Yeah, I know that there is a Sun School program in Fairview because a friend of mine who used to live across the street, she had her kid go into Sun School after school i just don't know if it was at the school or if it was usually at the school lucy was in the sun school program when she was in middle school hmm. when she went to uh alice ott in the david douglas district they had a really robust sun school program and the whole deal is that they're at the school so they don't have to transfer kids hmm. right i'm just wondering if there's a way that we could if they don't have a sun school program at Fairview, if there might be a way where we could bring the kids there or, I, you know, who knows? I, I don't know. It's just, it's a real, it's a, it's a lovely canvas upon which one could paint. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I just love about you. I love um, just the way that you're like, I, want to do this for all of Fairview like yeah just, thank you I just love that like because it's so easy to get into a groove of 
people who are just like me, you know, and, and right. you forget that there are lots of people who are super different. And this was a really good reminder. And thank you for saying that. I actually feel kind of seen. I don't, I, I, cause I, I feel, I do feel like that in this experience of walking around, I did like 175,250 steps. In three oh months. man. And you know, and I love an underdog, Holly. I love me some underdog. And there's a lot of underdogs out there, like in our, in our city, you know, the, I was, I spent a whole Saturday in Fairview Oaks and Fairview Woods. I spent an entire Sunday, that downpouring Sunday, a couple of weeks ago in three mobile home parks, like yeah. And dude, they, these, these folks really need some help and it's not equal. Like the stuff that I have here, like, you know, my fancy pond and like, you know, the stuff that they have on the lakes and the stuff that they have in Fairview village, they don't have that in old town. They yeah. don't have that in these mobile home parks. These kids, I mean, these are, these are places that are sited on industrial land that have nada. Yeah. Like, and you go into these parks and it's, spooky dude it is like I've it, there's just there's just a lot of poverty and you know because it's COVID like even their community centers which are like not much are closed and their pools are closed and even like really nice apartment complexes like all of that stuff is closed and all of that has been shuttered and there's lots of kids and kids that need something to do and people who need sidewalks and right like there's a lot, there's a lot to do. Um, and, uh, it's, it feels kind of frankly, pretty immoral that some places have really nice stuff and, mm. you know, and some places that don't, I think that one of the most lovely experiences I had in the three weeks was when I was at Fairview Oaks and I met this, this really awesome mom. She was a single mom and we talked for like an hour and I met her like in her car. She was like going to Fred's or something. And we wound up like talking and she lives here for the exact same reasons that I live here. And she's a, 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 an African-American single mom who lives in an apartment complex on the other side of town. And we are here for the exact same reasons. She's like, if I'm having a really bad day, I can come outside. And the hummingbird that is always there is in my tree there's frogs there's you know the creek runs through the the complex and she goes and i can hear the frogs and all the stress it just goes away i'm like dude i hear the hummingbirds i hear the frogs like yes i totally get it you know yeah, it's yeah. like we're all here mostly for the same reasons and some of it's because it's close to portland and whatever i mean but we're mostly here for the same reasons but people really don't have access to the same stuff right yeah and we don't have access to each other either like, exactly i don't know that woman and she lives two blocks from me probably mm -hmm. she know? does because after i finished over there i went i went to bridge street and that's kind of how i finished off my day is just did you walking go through down the, the woods street. i did i did and even that was kind of cool like because i know that you're on parks and it was like it was really interesting to kind of see how they all pulled kitchen chairs out and put them in front of the park because <laughs> we don't have any benches for them. No. And at first I was like kind of all bougie and I was like, I saw like, what is, the, what is all this people's chairs doing out here? And I'm like, they're just trying to enjoy themselves and meet up with their neighbors at, in, at their park. Mm -hmm. So maybe you ought to give them some fucking chairs. Maybe <laughs> you need to bring some benches over here for everybody. Right? Like, I don't know. It just, it, it, it was, it was a really, um, eye opening experience to just literally walk around and just pay attention and pay attention. Mm -hmm. right. I know how that goes. Yeah. Cause when I was in grad school, I, one of my assignments was to explore a neighborhood and this neighborhood oh, cool. was in London, right? So this was my study abroad semester. Oh my God, you studied abroad? I studied abroad in London in, um, in the first half of my last year in grad school. And so our assignment was to explore a neighborhood 
and document it with video and like describe how that neighborhood is cool in video. And yeah. Where'd you it go? Was, it, um, well, the, uh, the neighborhood was assigned to us. My neighborhood was Shortage. And I loved Shortage. It was so cool. <laughs> I don't have, I don't know anything about it. I've, you know, I've never been to London. Yeah, well, uh, it's like the north, sort of north of, of like the main part of London. And, um, you know, when London was really old a long time ago, Shortage was like out there, you know, that was the countryside. Right. And yeah, now it's just the middle of London, whatever. But um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to just like, walk through the neighborhood and what I was doing was taking pictures and videos so I had my camera and my video camera out and I'm sure I made a lot of people really nervous because I was taking pictures of their their building right. yeah I get it then all you were doing was like handing out flyers or whatever oh, dude I brought my camera yeah. You go on the website. I'll send you. I'll send you some, some links when we're done. But I took pictures, and I've been doing photo collages of nice. neighborhoods. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's a really great way to learn about a place. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I'm really, really stoked to hear about this and see about this. <laughs> yeah, I, you you can kind of be. I'll I'll send you a link, and you can just go on my website, and you can kind of just scroll down through my blog. And there's, there's a blog post and a, and a collage for every neighborhood that I visited. Nice. And just like whatever impressions I got or conversations that I had. Um, and they're just, it's such a great quilt that we live in. Like every little patch is its own thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you're right, we're not connected. Like and these county roads that cut us all up into these little bits and make in the it highway. really hard to get around and walk around. Like, you know, I met people in like the lakes that, you know, are amazingly will walk to stomping grounds, but they're like, we take our life in our own hands. I'm like, why, are, why wouldn't we want to build something so people can get Oh. Right. And like with this main street on Halsey project, like, don't we want to connect people? Like, Oh, that's a big, I really deal. feel like that's the next frontier. First of all is a equity. Like we need some freaking equity mm -hmm. and B connection. Yeah. yeah. We, right? were, we, were, we were poised, we were poised to, talk to talk about connection in the um, parks committee last year. Like we started talking about how do you connect? Like, where can we find places to put trails through here and especially across the highway and rail line because like north to south fairview is very divided super you know, big visited. time yeah yeah so, do you who is your who is your council liaison to the parks committee it was councillor voruz I don't know, like we haven't had a parks committee meeting in forever. Yeah, like literally we haven't had any meetings in forever. I think I wanna be the parks liaison and I think I wanna be the, um, either the public safety or the, only because of this issue around data. Like we just don't, well, where's the data? Where is it? I don't know, yeah. I don't know, I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna get it. And we're going to publish it. <laughs> but the parks, I know, the parks is really interesting to me. And um, I've been serving on the economic development. Yeah. No. It, it, I, 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 it. Yeah, it just, unfortunately, it just, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's sort of going anywhere. Like it doesn't, mm. and it's so important, Yeah. right? I just feel like I should be there right now because Sarah and I are trying to find money for a branding project for the Halsey, for Halsey. Like nice. we need to do that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately we've been sort of unsuccessful. A lot of the economic development money wisely is going to COVID stuff. Yeah. Right. 
So it's really going more directly to businesses, which is probably a better place to put it is directly in people instead of our like fancy branding thing. But I think that we could probably find enough change in the couch cushions between our three cities that we could right. fund a modest branding project. Yeah. I mean, I've worked on logos. I don't know. Like, you can yeah. I mean, honey, you know, we've already done so much work. Like, you know, the sticker exercise. Yeah. I read the report from that. And I think like if we pulled a whole bunch of stuff that already has been done, yeah, we could see that actually we probably are arriving at a pretty good proposition, like value proposition for our city and who we are and what, who we are, right? Our identity, mm -hmm. like this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And I, dude, I think it's green. Yeah. I, I really like the report that they made recently. Um, the like consultants said that Fairview is all about like nature and what else was it? I don't remember. It was nature really. It was. And like, that's what I found when I went out and I talked to people and that's what I saw like when I actually physically was walking around. I mean, I think that there's a general like kind of peace and quiet, feed the birds, feed the squirrels, get on the lake, mm -hmm. be on the, at the park, go for a walk, get out in the wetland, right? Like yeah. it is about outside. It's about nature and it's about outside. So I think like we're already halfway there and we could provide a consultant with like, here's what we've already talked about. Right. You know, and I actually did this like with Mike Abate. I'm like, well, and I'll send it to you, but I'm like community by nature instead of like a community of history and vision, just <laughs> community by nature. Right. Yeah. Which even if you think about it is sort of like a, another way to describe Fairview Village. It literally is community by nature. Like it was designed for community, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So some of these even kind of planned communities mm -hmm. are about that. Anyway, I, girl, I'm excited like to get in there and I'm really excited I, to work with you. Like I just, I like how you roll. I think that we could do some really good stuff. Really good stuff. Well, I hope to be of service. I mean, that's the whole point. Like, I don't really talk about the Planning Commission much on my YouTube channel, but I haven't talked about much on my YouTube channel at all. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm new here, you know, like, I'm just hanging out. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just chilling <laughs> with people. <laughs> I know. Are we talking about what you want us to talk about? Um, well, at some point we can talk about like the possibility of fair view dollars.